You're using ChatGPT wrong, but don't worry because in this video, we're gonna break down some of the commonest mistakes that people use every day with ChatGPT and turn you into a GPT master. With new models coming out all the time and tips from experts changing daily, it can be really confusing staying up to date and getting consistently good results out of ChatGPT. So hit that subscribe button and let's level up your AI game, starting with the first common mistake and how to correct it. Okay, so the first mistake that people make is skipping customized ChatGPT and the customs instructions box. It's one of ChatGPT's most powerful features and here's the mistake that people make. They either skip it altogether or the information they give is not specifically good. Now, what happens here is when you click on Customize ChatGPT, it opens up a modal window and you can enter in some information about yourself where you can be hyper specific, talking about your background, who you are and who you're writing for. And then there's also the second box, which asks you how you'd like ChatGPT to respond. Now, this was where it can get a little bit confusing and people aren't quite sure what to put in here. Well, think of this second box more of like a tone of voice. You can tell ChatGPT to respond like a coach, being encouraging, you can ask it to respond concisely, you can ask it to respond in bullet points, and you can even get it to respond in the tone of your favorite author or of an online creator that you like. And if you're still stuck here, you can actually go into ChatGPT and ask it to analyze the writing style of an author or someone that you admire online, and then paste this into the response box. Once you've saved this, anything you type in and prompt ChatGPT with will take these things into consideration and output in this style and format that's personalized to you. The next big mistake that I see people making all the time is about coding. Now I get it, coding can seem a little bit intimidating, especially if you studied something like medicine or social sciences in university. But guess what? ChatGPT can actually write really good lines of code for you and you don't even need to fully understand how it works. I've done this myself and it can help you push out lines of code that you can then put into your Webflow website or help you to decipher things like scripts for Google Docs that can really help you and boost your productivity. A quick example might be getting ChatGPT to write an audio recording script that you can embed into your website so that people can actually record their own audio and export it as an MP3 file. Or you could ask it to write a quick script for Google Docs that helps to build a summarization template before and after any meetings to save you time in work. This next mistake is pretty important because it's just so common and it's expecting perfection from ChatGPT on your first try. ChatGPT is awesome, but it's not completely magic just yet. Asking for a response and then expecting it to be completely flawless on the first try is going to lead to failure and frustration. You need to refine those prompts and you need to ask it multiple questions to get back what you want. And here's a really quick hack that you can use that will save you tons of time if getting the best prompt and response is really important to you. We can head back over to customize ChatGPT and in the response box, we can put in, after I enter a prompt or instruction, ask me three questions that would improve your response. What this will do is that every time you input something into ChatGPT, it will actually check its understanding and will ask you further questions to make sure it's got all the information before it then outputs a response. If you don't want this to happen every single time, you can just put this in at the end of any specific individual prompt that you enter into ChatGPT and see what happens. I find that for people just starting out, this is a great hack and it avoids you getting frustrated when you're giving too broad a prompt and then get frustrated with the results. Now, this mistake is really common and it's actually about putting in too much information into one single prompt. The temptation is always there. You want to give ChatGPT all of the context and you want to upload as many documents as possible. But what actually ends up happening is it overwhelms ChatGPT with too much at once and then the result is generic, shallow answers. Instead, your input needs to be broken up into smaller, more manageable chunks. Let's say, for example, you want to construct a business plan. Instead of asking for a full strategy in one go, ask for individual components, such as build out a marketing strategy or build out a sales strategy first, rather than expecting it to output everything all at once. The context window also limits this because the response you get back is going to be slightly limited in terms of the size that ChatGPT can output. So try and focus on manageable chunks that ChatGPT can respond with and then build up your document from there. Now, mistake number five is only using ChatGPT for summaries. Don't get me wrong, summaries are super helpful and I use it all the time, but why should we stop there? Instead of getting a summary, use ChatGPT to extract actionable insights. 
For example, if you're reading an article on holiday shopping trends, don't just ask for a summary. Try asking, how can I apply these trends to boost my brand awareness as a marketing manager? Now, instead of just a rehash of the article, you actually get personalized actionable strategies based on your real world goals that you can then put into action. Mistake number six that people don't even realize they're making is not using personas. ChatGPT works so much better when you give it a specific role to play. This could be anything from being a life coach to being an expert blog writer with 10 years of experience. And why does this work? Well, it helps ChatGPT tailor its responses to fit that persona that you've asked it to adopt, giving you more relevant expert-like answers. So next time, try this. Act as a productivity expert for work. Give me five ways to streamline my daily workflow. You'll be amazed at just how much more specific and useful the outputs you get are. Now, mistake number seven is something really important, but it's one that I see people doing all the time, and it's not using examples when prompting. I get it, we all want to get responses back from ChatGPT in the quickest and shortest time possible, but if you take the time and upload an example output of what you want, your results will 10X in terms of quality. For example, if we want to generate a good LinkedIn post from a longer blog article, instead of just saying generate a LinkedIn post and then having a variable result, we can actually take a format of LinkedIn post that we know works well with a particular structure and use this as an example, asking ChatGPT to output against this particular template, but change up the content within it. I've actually created a GPT to do this to automate all of my LinkedIn posts, and it's been an absolute game changer because I know the results will be consistent. Okay, so we're not done just quite yet. I wanna give you two quick bonus prompts to add into the seven mistakes that you've already heard. So mistake number eight is actually not downloading the ChatGPT app on mobile or the desktop app on your computer. These have slightly better functionality in terms of voice and allow you to access ChatGPT on the go more effectively. I've been using them all the time and with ChatGPT 4 Vision, you can actually take something like a screenshot of your desktop and have it analyzed by ChatGPT. Or more recently, when I was out at the shops, I took a screenshot of a bunch of different wines and asked ChatGPT to recommend one against some of the favorite wines I've ever had. This gives you access to ChatGPT in a much more free and flexible way, and you're able to use the vision and speech tools in a much more accessible way. Now, our final mistake on the list is all about not keeping up with the latest AI trends and therefore getting the most out of ChatGPT. I've got a huge bank of over a thousand prompts available completely for free, which you can find in the link below attached to my newsletter. By trying out some of these prompts and experimenting, you'll slowly get better at prompt engineering and understand how ChatGPT works and the fullest extent of its capabilities. This then means that when you need it the most, you can use it effectively and save you tons of time in work or at home and focus on the things that matter in life. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've got another great video looking at how you can get the most out of ChatGPT with some more specific prompts, which I'll pop up over here. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing and I'll catch you again in the next video. See ya.